Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And we are almost done. Okay. We have figured out the problem. The problem is we have to example <laughs> for you all <laughs> what persistence looks like. And nice. we, we weren't going to pass that test until we did so. So, <laughs> so here we are again. <laughs> here we are again. I am not discouraged at all. Um, and I really, you know what, it, it really does kind of connect to what we're talking about and, and we are really just getting started. And I know you have so many wonderful nuggets to share or there wouldn't have been the struggle um, getting us to this point of conversation. Um, but I want to really dig into what it looks like and what it means to love yourself. Because I think if you do, if we do, we will push past when it gets hard, when it gets challenging. Um, and you wrote about, you know, just that whole, what it looks like to love yourself. Before you answer, I want to make sure those of you who are in the chat, if you would not mind sharing kind of where you are as it relates to your levels of self-love, just from a one to five, where are you? One would mean, you know what, I have a whole lot of self-love to learn. And then five would mean I'm off the charts with it. I'm loving me better than other people love me and I'm showing people how to love me, right? Nice. Um, so if you wouldn't mind sharing that bit for me, Aviola. Yes. So I love this conversation. I love this conversation about self-love so much because, you know, for us and for people who are younger than us, we're really the first group, um, especially from our backgrounds, first group where people told us, you know, you can, you can be anything you want. You can do anything you want. Just love yourself. Mm -hmm. But as I say all the time, nobody told us how. They said, just love yourself, but they never told us what that meant and how to do it. And it wasn't because they didn't want to, mm -hmm. it's because they didn't know. Mm. They didn't know themselves. And so, you know, the beautiful thing is that so many sacrifices have been made for us on our behalf of people who, generations before, who we will never even know their names, that it is a beautiful luxury that I just want to just give thanks that we can even just come together, you know, in this sister circle on a Wednesday night and have this conversation. Like, this is a luxury. This is abundance. This is riches. This is blessings that, you know, we just need to just be able to rejoice around. Yeah. So, so love to me is us being able to connect to the force within us, that God force, God energy within us. As I say all the time, you are not the one broken thing in God's beautiful garden. Mm. You know? And so when we look at, when we grow up looking at ads that tell us something's wrong with our hair, something's wrong with our body, something's wrong with our skin, we don't talk right, we're not educated right, you know, all of the different mm. ways that they can tell us that we are broken, it then makes sense that we would have challenges around self-love. And I point that out because so often, you know, we feel like, okay, well, what, am, what people will say to me, Abiola, why don't I get this yet? I've been reading all the books. I've been doing all of this. I've been doing this devotional practice. Why don't I get this yet? And it's not that there's something wrong with you. It's that we are inundated on a daily basis yes. with voices, with ads, with, you know, all kinds of things telling us what is wrong with us. The self-love conversation starts with telling yourself what is right with you, mm. with telling yourself, loving, honoring, and cherishing yourself like you would want someone else to do, but mm -hmm. you doing that for you. It starts with self-acceptance. Mm -hmm. Do you accept yourself? Not that you're going to, you know, not like, okay, well, I love myself when I have this amount of money in the bank, when I have this kind of relationship, or when my kids or my family is doing this, or when my body looks like this, or my hair looks, no, right this minute. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you don't want to evolve and grow, but just like we can look at a child that we love and we love them for who they are that moment and we're going to love them for who they evolve into being. Yeah. The same for ourselves. Loving ourselves is a spiritual practice. Loving ourselves is the most sacred practice that there is. Yeah. So thank you for that. That is such a gift. I, I want to frame it because oftentimes, as you said, we haven't been predisposed, right, to what self-love looks like. We may have been, maybe, have been told just love yourself. And oftentimes, 
Some of us have been told the opposite of that. Some of us have been, it has been verbalized to us mm -hmm. that we are ugly or that we are not worthy or that we'll, you know, we'll never find real love or, you know, that we are not worthy to be loved. All of those things, they come, um, as you said, subliminally, but oftentimes some of us have been told that directly. And so yes. we've got a whole lot of hurdles to cross as it relates to um, getting to that place. And I think what happens is, you know, we, we, we isolate ourselves to the point where it's self-taught. We are our own worst critics. And so we, we talk all of these things to ourselves. And many of us as women analyze everything to a T. We think and overthink everything. And so we do the same things to ourselves. And so, Abiola, I like to flip it and just say the same exact way that you give grace and you show love to someone else show that same, if not more, level of love to yourself. Because oftentimes we know how to love other people. Absolutely. Like we know how to give that to other people. And, and if we just thought about the things that we say to ourselves, you're fat, you're, you know, you're ugly, you're, you know, you'll, you'll never be like her or that, those kinds of things. If we said that out loud to somebody else, we would never say that out loud to somebody else. So we are literally doing violence to ourselves by feeding ourselves that negativity. And so I just love that you are on this self-love soapbox because it is something that, um, you know, I, I grew, I've, I've grown up Pentecostal and in church all my life. And we've, re we've really been taught, you know, self-love is the, maybe the equal to uh, pride or, you know, conceit or arrogance and you, I believe we are all of, I'm all about service and we should be serving others, mm -hmm. but I don't believe that self-love equates to selfishness. I really mm -hmm. don't. I don't believe it equates to pride or conceit. And so when you, when you think about those things that you shared with us, Abiola, moving from that hurdle of, I love your answer to that was to literally accept who you are right now. Yes. How does how do we move from this? Um, okay, I'm working on loving myself. I'm loving on accepting myself, to really not being afraid to be bold and brilliant. And I share that because I'm looking at you, <laughs> and um, not only do you do you shine right now in this moment, but um, but you preach it and you teach it and you you know you speak it that that women should be brilliant meaning shining and doing whatever they do best without apology how does one one move from you know not even loving herself to dealing with the issue of self-love to really putting herself out there and taking the risk of folks talking about her and all that kind of stuff yes yeah all of that could you speak to that yes 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 so first thing is that they will talk about you. <laughs> Tell it. So I got news for everybody who is listening to this right now. Take it from your loud sister in New York City. <laughs> They're talking about you right now. Yes, they are. They are talking about you right this minute. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I love that you shared that so often that we think that self-love, you know, particularly in our churches, oftentimes we think that self-love is tied in with conceit or with thinking that you're better than someone else. That's something completely different. Yep. That's something that is out of alignment. No. When you are a person who is truly in love with yourself, you not only see the grace and brilliance and beauty within yourself, but you see it in other people too. Mm -hmm. that, that kind of, that level of judgment is an act of, as you said, violence against the self, mm -hmm. just like it is when you're judging other people that it's an act of violence against others. Mm -hmm. And so here's a beautiful way to look at it, that if we look at, you know, mother nature that, you know, that, you know, my, my grandparents were both farmers on both sides. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that I learned from, if you look at like how nature goes that you reap and you sow, right? You can't, you, you get poured into and you pour out. You can't take from the earth and keep taking from the land without pouring into it, without replanting seeds. Yeah. It's going to not, it's not going to continue to bloom and to grow. And it's the same for us that so many of us, I know that I saw my mom mentally, emotionally, spiritually, spiritually beaten down and exhausted and, you know, all of those things. So many of us saw that 
as a model of womanhood. I remember there was a commercial when I was growing up, you know, in the eighties and it was like, you know, I could bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, <laughs> never yeah. let him forget he's a man. You know, it was like, I was like, that's a lot. You it's know, a like, lot. Okay. <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that is a whole lot mm -hmm. and so what you then have is that so many of us try to give from you know because giving is easy for us giving comes so easy for us mm -hmm. but we're trying to give on from an empty cup we're trying to give from running on empty mm -hmm. and that is you know that kind of self-harm is just destructive to you Ooh. it's destructive also to your children and to the children around you who are maybe seeing a different a way of being that is you know not how what would serve them yeah. you know so you pouring first into yourself yep. is not only an act of devotion for mm -hmm. your children but i feel like very strongly that it is also an act of devotion you know for your creator mm -hmm. you know if god made you if you're made in you know the image of the most high you know having reverence mm -hmm. for that beautiful creation is a gift that's a gift that's gratitude that's saying thank you yes thank you oh that is so good you made me think I, I, i've often said that you know i believe that not honoring myself the creation that that god made it really is disrespectful to god if i don't honor me and so many of us we want to be you know um we want to be sacred and whole beings. We want to make sure that we're honoring God. And so, you know, there's this sense of, um, I have to, to, uh, be lowly and, and, and meek. And there's, there's, um, a way that you can shine brilliantly, um, by making sure that you shine from the inside out. And it's wow. not about how I look. It's not about what I have. It's not about downing any other woman in order to shine. Yes. Um, that all of that means that you're able to shine brilliantly. Let me tell you, ABO, oh, some, some folks have done the, the number thing that we asked them to do the, to rate where their self-love is. Yes. We got a lot of threes, which is not bad. We got some 3.5s. We're on a journey towards self-love. We're always on a journey. Um, and work in progress is what some used as the wording. And then um, being compared to others was a big barrier to self-love, one person said. And uh, the struggle to be bold without apology is, mm -hmm. a, is a struggle. And so I want you to talk about, I love this wording. I hope... I hope you got it patented, girl. Um, woman manifesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold on. <laughs> gotta slow down. Woman manifesting. Okay. Yes, so, you said it right. Yes. I said it right. <laughs> so, listen, can you talk about what it is? And um, because I really wanted this conversation because. Um, I see your brilliance and your strength and, and, and what you share with others, it's contagious. I really want folks to know what, what reclaiming your power and what what manifesting looks like. Could you talk about it? Yes. So first of all, I just want to just honor everybody who shared where they are on their journey. Thank you so much for being transparent, for sharing yourself with us, you know, being vulnerable we were taught was was a weakness but being vulnerable actually is a superpower so thank you for doing that because when people are not allowing themselves to be vulnerable they don't allow themselves to be authentic and that's where we see people faking the funk you know we call it new york you know with feeling that they have to be something other than themselves so you are on your way in on your self-love journey and so one manifesting is the principle of i created this term to mean um us as women folk being able to fully take up room on this planet everybody if you're watching this wherever you are i want you to open your arms and just take up room yes <laughs> yes take up room yes. and so many of us you know we're taught to squeeze in to suck in you know we saw our moms wearing spanks and back in my day when my mom was wearing it was called a girdle you know and you know containing yourself and you know trying to suck in holding oh, crushing, like, yourself don't over take up, again, don't take mm -hmm. up room 
Yes. And mm-hmm. so, you know, but that mentality is killing us. Mm-hmm. It's killing us emotionally. It's killing mm-hmm. us spiritually, you know, on some levels it's killing us physically. And so we want to move away from that, especially as we're coming out of, you know, coming into this new, um, this new energy, as we all step out after this pandemic mm-hmm. passes, we're already different people than we were when this started. Yes. And so we don't want to come out with the same energy if we don't know it yet, that we know that tomorrow's not promised and that this moment is your moment to yes. shine. And so you don't want to wait and, and for, okay, one day I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to do the, have the courage to do that. This is your one day. Yes. This is our one day right now. One day is right this minute, mm. right this minute. And so it starts with allowing yourself to take up room Mm. and sometimes that means physical room sometimes it may mean taking up room in a conversation Mm -hmm. so if you're a person like for me for a long time you know I was raised to be a people pleaser a polite person a nice girl all of those things and I would be Mm -hmm. you know the person that would have everybody's back and people wouldn't have my back but I wouldn't say anything about it or be on the phone with friends and help them through to solve their whole life issue and they didn't know what was going on me my whole life was in shambles but I didn't feel like I had anybody to talk to about Mm -hmm. it because I was the person being there for everybody else so taking up emotional space and being able to state here's where I am this is what is going on for me and the best way that you can start that you know an assignment for everybody who's here is tell somebody tomorrow dare to tell somebody your story dare to tell somebody your truth because oftentimes we feel like our truth and our story doesn't matter Mm. especially you know for me growing up a black girl you know in this country like we're taught that you know our story is irrelevant oh okay well that's just another you know just another black girl went through whatever who cares Mm -hmm. we care Yes. We care. Yes. We care. And we will have each other's back. I was watching um the Michelle Obama becoming documentary today and I was watching it. I had the good fortune to watch with my sister and my mom. And you know, they were talking about like just what we experience and you know, like somebody in and it says something like, you know, well, who will have our back? I said, We will have our back. Yes. Just like we've been having our back from Mm -hmm. the beginning of time, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so we can lament the fact that other folks don't, but we do. And so in the meanwhile, you daring to tell your story and say, this happened to me. The most powerful words that a woman can speak, telling your story and daring to share your truth and not needing any response from the other person, not needing them to validate your experience and say, that is true, that happened, that didn't happen. I feel, doesn't matter. You speak your truth and dare to tell your story. Woo! This is good. This is good. Y'all, so, I, and, and notes, you got yeses and loves and hearts and everything in here because it resonates so deeply. Um, and I love that you are giving such practicality to it because whether we need to physically just readjust our posture yes. and, 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 and hold our chin up and stick our chest yes. out, whether we need to, to lift our voices because many of us don't speak up for ourselves yes. in settings. And so our voices and, and and then, so just to take up some space and do it unapologetically, um, and I love that. And then say, being able to tell our stories, oftentimes we feel like someone else is more articulate than us. Someone else's story is more profound than ours. I love that. Thank you so much for that. It, it makes me think about, and, and this is sort of the last little bit before um, you tell us kind of um, where you are, where, where you live in, in social media so we can find you and whatever um, you can do. I love someone said, Rhonda said in here, speak our truth so that we can stand, and Angela said, stand in my truth, that we can honestly vocalize it. Um, It makes me think about um, just (laughs) growing up, I I used to do what was expected of me because I wanted to be the girl who everybody liked and everybody appreciated. And so I did the things that were expected of me things I didn't even like. I wore the, the ruffles and the pig and the, and the, um, the patent leather shoes and the bows. And, and, and I am such a earthy girl. Like that's just me. And I had to discover what I liked um, and say, and say, you know, I don't, I'm not worried about what other people like, what other people say, because I found who I am. How do we, Aviola, how do we 
Um, what kind of self-discovery do we need to do? What kinds of questions do we need to ask to dis self-discover, to find out yeah. who we are so that we can begin loving ourselves so that we're not, um, not loving ourselves because we're pretending to be what someone else wants us to be? Woo, yes. So I talk about this in my last book in the Sacred Bombshell Handbook of Self-Love. And I'm talking about this in the current book that I'm writing because this is such an important thing. Yeah. A part of your self-love journey for most of us is going to need to include getting to know yourself because oftentimes when you're trying to squeeze yourself into who, what other people expect, you don't even know who you are. You don't even know what you like and what you enjoy. And, you know, the things that you're telling yourself like, oh, okay, well, you know, I got to have this car and I got to have this house may not even be about you, may not even be the wants that you, you know, the things that you really want. So start with asking yourself, what do I enjoy? What do I enjoy? And here's a question for you. If I really believe in myself, you know, what would I dare to do? Mm. If I really, but somebody type it in the comments. Mm. If I really believed in me, mm -hmm. what would I dare to do? And mm -hmm. that's going to mean different things to different people. Mm -hmm. But it's you walking your walk because, you know, at the end of our days, you know, here in this beautiful earth school, you know, that our God has given us yeah. at the end of your days, it's going to be just you and your maker. And so you want to be accountable to you. Did I come and live the life that I was born to live? Mm -hmm. Did I take this beautiful gift that was given to me and do with it what I came to do? Because as we know, as we see with the things that are going on around us currently, no matter how rich a person is, they can't pay for another breath. That's right. <laughs> you can have all the money in the world. You cannot pay for another breath. So a breath is gifted to you. So you are here right now by grace and grace alone. So take advantage of that. Take full advantage of that. It's a gift. It it's a, a gift. gift. It is a gift. This is so rich. Um, and and <laughs> I want somebody to know, because Aviola, I want you to, in your last words, to just speak life to a, a few people who are really struggling deep right now, because mm -hmm. not only has um, the COVID kept us isolated for some of us, um, right. it felt more like, um, I've had to have I've had to learn how to deal with me because I've been trying to be busy and move around and go places just so I wouldn't have to deal with me. Yes. And so some folks are we we're really honest in this space and some folks have said, you know, when it comes to do I know me? Do I love me? The answers to some of those are no. And so this is a space and time that's either, you know, heaven for some introverts and, and, and hell for some folks who need, who are really trying to avoid um, this space. And so while we're in this space, would you mind giving us some, some nuggets to leave with what we should be doing while we're here, especially if we're struggling with, yes. uh, with dealing with ourselves? Thank you so much for sharing that. I made a video a few weeks ago, uh, maybe about a month ago now, about what to do if you already were depressed or already had anxiety before this hit and then now this hit. Um, and so I wanna invite everybody after this, I'll, I'm gonna give you guys my YouTube, definitely go and check it out there. Um, I am a person that is naturally an introvert. I'm an introverted extrovert or extroverted introvert, however you look at it. I like being by myself. I like my time. I like, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. However, I am here and I am, as I said, I am um, quarantined at my parents' house. I'm quarantined with my family um, because... It, and it didn't start out this way. You know, it came, I came here for a number of reasons, one of which is to keep an eye on my parents, make sure they're not, you know, out and about or whatever. But yeah. it ended up enriching me because I think I'm, I've been here now going on two months. I'm losing time as I'm sure a lot of us are and how long this whole thing has been going on. I came here in March. Yeah. Um, and if I was home in my apartment and unable to, have human contact, 
for this long because I'm dating, but not anybody that I would want to be quarantined with. Right. Um, and, right. And my parents are, you know, my parents are older, so yeah. I can't leave because then I'll be exposed to other people and then I won't be able to be around them. Yeah. Two people in my Manhattan building have died so far since this started. And I'm scared to call my next door neighbor, who's my friend. I'm scared to call him again because I don't want to hear about another death. Two people yeah. in my Manhattan building and a friend of mine. And I have numerous family members who thankfully have recovered from this situation. Yeah. So I'm speaking to you from my soul and mm -hmm. from my heart. Mm -hmm. um, don't think that just because you are physically alone mm -hmm. that you need to walk this alone. So yeah. I'm gonna speak about the alone part and what to do in that, in the solitude part, mm -hmm. and then in the connection part. So while you are home, or while you're, you know, by yourself, some of the things that you can do um, are, you know, this may be time for you to create, a, give birth to a creative project. And that'll mean different things right. to different people. So, you know, you may want to create a podcast series like this, or you may want to, um, you know, I don't know, take up fashion or sewing or something that you haven't yet, you know, thought about. This is a good time to explore and ask yourself, who do I want to be when I come out of this? Mm -hmm. You know, go in and maybe organize your clothes and all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But, and, and here's a big one that I actually told my, my coaching clients, <laughs> my spiritpreneur coaching clients, mm -hmm. you know, this is a good time to get on, get on an app and, so, and see who's out there. If you're single, what? <laughs> I told what? my clients, I was like, get you a quarantine boo. <laughs> It's a safe way to date, child. <laughs> the great, the, here's, the, here's the great thing. Here's the great thing about this. And, and our sisters will appreciate this. You, If you are somebody who, like me, likes to take things slowly and people usually might seem like, oh, well, let's meet up. Oh, I would, but we can't. That quarantine, though. <laughs> so this is a good time to, to start chatting and really get to know somebody. And, you know, I recommend, you know, there's this quote and I can't remember who said it, but that, you know, 99% of our problems can be traced back to us not being able to feel comfortable being by ourselves. Yeah. And so try to try a practice of easy meditation. Doesn't mean you believe in anything. You don't have to believe in anything, but you and your creator mm -hmm. set your timer for five minutes and just sit for five minutes and breathe mm -hmm. and pay attention to the sound of your breath mm -hmm. and what beautiful music it is to be able to inhale mm -hmm. and exhale mm -hmm. to inhale and exhale mm -hmm. this is a good time also to start nourishing your body the way that we eat is also an act of self-care and so it depends on where you are emotionally and where you are, you know, mm -hmm. right now that if you, you know, this is not the time to beat yourself up to say, well, why am I not doing more? Why can't I do these things? We are all, all of us, everybody is in a state of grief, mm -hmm. grief for loss of, you know, whatever safety we thought we had, grief for loss of opportunities. Some people loss of income, some people loss of family and loss of life, loss of health, mm -hmm. you know? And so it is okay to, mm -hmm. you know, to, feel out of sorts. Yeah. So have compassion for yourself. We've never done this before. We've never lived through this before. Mm -hmm. So baby yourself, mm -hmm. love up on yourself, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> be kind to yourself. Yeah. And it's perfectly okay to do that. It's not only okay, but it's necessary to your survival. And then reach out you know, reach out to people who, you know, who maybe you haven't spoken to in a while. That's perfectly okay. Everybody is going through this together, mm -hmm. you know, connect with people and just be like, hey, I know we haven't spoken in a while. I, I reached out to my childhood best friend um, a couple of weeks ago and said, hey, just checking on you. How mm -hmm. are you? Are you okay? Where are you living now? What's going on? So just reach out and just connect. And there is nothing wrong, but everything right with saying, I need some help. Hey, I'm in trouble right now mm -hmm. and I'm going through this and this is difficult and this is scary and I don't know what to do. Yeah, that is so good. I, I so appreciate the practicality of what you are suggesting because people do not appreciate 
you can do it. Just love yourself. Just, you know, this is just get through it. You can make it through it. And so I love and, and, and some folks are writing some of the things that you share, give yourself permission to find yourself. Someone even asked, and at, we're closing up, but someone even asked about whether we think some of these issues are related to a codependency problem to people. Mm. And, and I do believe that oftentimes we find our self-worth in the, yeah. the love and care for others. And we feel like if we're not able to do for others, where are, where's our worth? You right. know? We think that that's our value, but I just want to just add to that, you know, yeah. before, um, before we close one other thing that I left out yeah. is give yourself permission to feel your feelings that oftentimes, you know, the reasons why we have so many addictions, why we, we, you know, either spend or eat or drugs or alcohol or whatever, all of that is to numb and avoid how we're feeling. And so that's a big part of this fear right now that, woo, it's just me and me. And so it's you and your feelings. Give yourself to feel it. If you're feeling angry and pissed off, feel angry and pissed off. Because you will never get past those feelings if you don't go through those feelings. Yeah. You yes. really can't get to the other side of them. So to actually allow yourself, it's okay not to be okay. And it's you okay. have to, and you have to be around people that give you permission. Someone said it in here um, to give you permission to, to feel those feelings. Um, someone said we can't suppress our feelings. Absolutely. Because yeah. well you're a, a powder keg waiting to go off if you're suppressing everything. That is so good. Yeah. We had a whole nother uh, uh, track <laughs> could have gone down because you have a community of spiritpreneurs and what that means I just thought with all of the struggle and perseverance that it took to get us to this conversation I knew that someone and, it, and you'll be able to see it when we get off Aviola it is just so many folks who needed this conversation to just be centered on the fact that it's okay to center in on what your needs are um, and, and whatever your coping, uh, your healthy coping me mechanisms are, prayer, meditation, um, talking to someone, community, not isolating, meditation, breathing. Dance, dancing. Yes. Yes. Get your twerk ministry Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's not real twerking if you don't look back at it when you yes. do. You gotta look back. <laughs> Um, but this has been so helpful to us. Could you please share with us? Um, and, and we we shared it at the beginning of the very first version of what we did. But if you wouldn't mind sharing, kind of what what you what you offer, what you have available to us, and where we can find you. Yes. So thank you so much for this sacred conversation. This is such a beautiful circle. For the whole second part of that conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm going to be interviewing you for my podcast as well. When we're booking I again, that. I will let you know about that. Yeah. But yes. So my main home hub online, my main website is womanifesting.com, like you said. So it's like manifesting, but womanifesting.com. And that's where you can find everything. Um, it links to my YouTube videos, have a YouTube channel, podcast, um, courses, all of that. My, I have also books, meditation albums, affirmation cards, a lot of um, different tools for your evolution, your personal evolution. And so, and my, my main course, my main coaching program that I have right now is for spiritpreneurs, you know, spiritual women, entrepreneurs and creative people or people who want to be entrepreneurs or creative people who are interested in being more visible. It's called the Visibility Lab and it has a program in it called the Visibility Book Lab where right now I'm shepherding a group of amazing women to write empowerment books. So if you want to write your own empowerment book and you may be interested in that program, you can definitely either drop me an email or start with my free course. My free course is at the link richgoddess.club. That link again is richgoddess.club, richgoddess.club, or just drop me an email at business at abiolaabrams.com, business at abiolaabrams.com, or just hit your name up and be like, I'm trying to contact that Abiola girl about writing my book. <laughs> she will I got you. I got you. This has been so good. I'm making sure that they have all of the information in the chat. 
Um, the very first place I, I think I, I tag you uh, in here at Abiola TV so they can start there. And yes, get yes. I forgot to even mention the social media. Sorry, <laughs> sis. So, yes. So Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. I'm at Abiola TV. The TV stands for transformation and victory. So Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. The YouTube is Planet Abiola, but everything else is Abiola TV. Um, and so just, you know, Twitter, Instagram, um, everything, everywhere. <laughs> I told you I'm country. All of my country twang comes out, Abiola. <laughs> it's all good. It's Thank all you. good. Thank you so much for this. This has been um, so rich and so worth the struggle at the beginning. <laughs> yes. It really has been. For those of you who stopped by or who stuck with us um, through our technical difficulties, we really appreciate you. You can find us here every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. We have another real conversation with real women every Wednesday night. You can meet us this coming Saturday um, and go to our realwomenrock.org website to find out the specific information. But this Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern time, we are hosting a virtual sister circle where we will celebrate motherhood. But just in case there have been some difficulties connected to you being a mom or a daughter in your mother-daughter relationships, we're gonna process all of that together. And so we would love to, for you to join us. You have to go to realwomenrock.org or go to any of our social media sites Real Women Rock, so that you can get information about this Saturday. We look forward to seeing you either Wednesday or Saturday. Thank you so much, Abiola. I so appreciate you. Thank you, sis. I appreciate you too. Until our next conversation. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.